Right now at 6 o'clock, a controversial vaccination bill makes progress. What's inside of it? Plus. Liar. Liar. The alleged Liar. Max Dabber says he is the real victim in a courtroom outburst. The witness who set him off. And cracking jokes on the court. Comedian and trailblazer superfan Ian Carmel, who you saw there, tries to make Dame's famous shot at the Moda. This is KGW News at 6. We start with good news in our region's fight against a measles outbreak. Tonight, that fight might be over. Thank you for being with us. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm Dan Haggerty. Health officials in Washington set to make the announcement Monday. At the same time, a controversial bill removing some vaccine exemptions is making its way through the Oregon legislature. KGW's Morgan Romero is here with the latest on the measles outbreak and this piece of legislation, Morgan. Laurel and Dan, that legislation, House Bill 3063, is sparking heated debate this session. This morning, it passed out of committee and it'll now head to the House floor. A bill pulling hundreds to the state capitol and other parts of Oregon. Passionate ralliers pleading with lawmakers not to pass House Bill 3063. People on both sides packing hearings in the legislature. The bill would remove philosophical and religious vaccine exemptions for kids in school, but keep exemptions for medical reasons. And if you don't do it, then your kids are going to get thrown out of school. And that is an extreme extreme bill. This bill is terrible from a lot of different perspectives. Um, you know, as a mom, it's a terrible bill. I am on the school board and that's a terrible, it's a terrible bill from a school perspective for funding and an education access perspective. A chief sponsor of the bill, Representative Sherry Helt, says she's listening to opponents. We have to make sure that we know that everybody's heart is in the right place. We're all trying to protect children. Helt and another lawmaker made a list of amendments, including streamlining the process for parents who want a doctor's permission to delay or opt out for medical reasons. Creating a policy that's preventative and not reactive is key, advocates say. When we can protect our children through herd immunity, we're able to protect the children that cannot be vaccinated, and we have to make sure that we hit that threshold. We have a high level of herd immunity. People here are protected. So I think that the crisis that they're making it out to be is a little bit overblown. Opponents feel it's overreaching and parents should have a choice. In committee Friday, sure. some legislators uh, agreed. And I am a health provider and I believe very strongly that people have the right to say no. But OHSU pediatrician Alana Braun says as fewer kids get vaccinated, it makes room for preventable diseases to make a comeback. Braun says conflicting information makes it tough. We have a lot of really good scientific evidence that says that vaccines are very safe and they're really effective at protecting us against these diseases. That we need to make sure that we're creating a safe place so that kids who can't receive their vaccines can go to school and they don't have to worry about their health and safety and their lives. And that good news we mentioned earlier, across the river in Clark County, Washington, public health officials are expected to declare their measles outbreak over if no new cases are reported over the weekend. They haven't had a confirmed case since March 18th, and the county declares outbreaks over after 42 days without any new cases. Back to you. Thank you, Morgan. And around the country, measles are spreading at record rates. Cases have been reported in 22 states this year as of Wednesday. In Southern California, UCLA and Cal State Los Angeles ordered a quarantine. It impacts more than 900 students, faculty and staff who were possibly exposed to measles, unvaccinated or can't show proof. Outside the White House today, President Trump weighed in, urging parents to get their kids immunized. They have to get the shot. The vaccinations are so important. This is really going around now. They have to get their shot. In the past, doctors say the president suggested an inaccurate link between autism and vaccines. If you would like to catch up on all of our measles coverage, you can do so on our website, kgw.com, or download the KGW mobile app. We have been on top of this story since the very first case. The man behind an axe massacre near Woodburn had meth, pot, and alcohol in his system when he murdered four members of his own family. That's according to a toxicology report released this week. Clackamas County deputies shot and killed 42-year-old Mark Gago on January 19th. Before that, Gago killed his mother, stepfather, girlfriend, and their nine-month-old daughter at their rural home. 
A medical examiner said Gago's alcohol levels were below the legal limit, but meth affects everybody differently. Just in, we've learned the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office will stop assisting Portland police officers on some calls within city limits. In a letter to employees released this afternoon, Sheriff Craig Roberts said he made that decision based on deputies' safety concerns. And he referred to concerns brought up by Portland's police union president who said there is intense anti-police sentiment in Portland that the city council seems to share. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office will now consider calls for help during SWAT situations on a case by case basis and may not send deputies into Portland. They'll also only respond to TriMet related issues that are within Clackamas County. The sheriff went on to say they will always respond to help for any officer from any agency who's in immediate need of assistance. We have reached out to Portland police to find out how this change will impact the bureau. We'll let you know when we learn more. So uh, maybe you noticed them downtown today. E-scooters are back. Things are a little bit different this time around, though, and we know some people have opinions about that. They sure do. That's why it's the topic of tonight's KGW viewer voice poll. So get ready to vote. Are you happy with the new rules in place to make for a better and safer experience with these e-scooters? Let us know at KGW.com slash vote or on your KGW app. Just click that tile that says viewer voice. If you are not yet really familiar with these new rules, we have KGW's Devin Haskins joining us live to explain what they are. Devin. Well, I think one of the biggest changes is the amount. So last time around last summer, there was about 2,500. This time there's more than triple that, but you won't expect to see uh, sidewalks just covered in uh, scooters. Now it's kind of a slow rollout of the first wave. Companies are only granted are able to release a couple hundred this first week. Lime was the first company to launch their fleet just before noon unloading the scooters out of the back of a van in East Portland. Like to do it right, it involves really good partnership with the city and the citizens of Portland. Three companies, Lime, Spin, and Bolt, were all awarded permits. Lime and Spin got theirs out today. Bolt, still a couple weeks away. It's just something different, why not? I mean, we're here, we're here to have fun and it's just something we've never done. So some of the things that changed. Peabot has required that a geo fence be placed around all parks citywide. On the app, they're colored red. And when you enter a park, a notification like this will be sent to your phone. That's awesome because in case you didn't know um, that you weren't supposed to be there, it lets you know that you're not supposed to be there. But on the first day, the thrill was about getting one. As soon as this fleet was put out in the Northwest Park blocks, a group was right there to get it. They're fun. They're quicker than the bus. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just like bob and weave. It's good times. I love them. They're a lot of fun. Absolutely good time to get around the city. There's also a serious side, a risk to this new reward. Like many people in Portland, I thought it would be great fun to take to head down to um, downtown and ride the scooters. So Adele brought... Hughes Romco checked out a scooter last time around and paid the price after hitting a bump in the road. I landed on my right leg and somehow the combination of um, the impact, the momentum, I'm not sure what my um, my femur ended up driving through my tibia. So what started out as a fun trip around Portland ended up as a week in the hospital. Now, that's not meant to scare you, but more warn you about some of the dangers that could come with this uh, new toy and having a fun trip around Portland. Now, city law says helmets are required driving around today, seeing people enjoy them. Plenty were not wearing them. Back to you. I've yet to see someone wearing a helmet. Th yeah. Devin, thank you. Appreciate it. And hey, keep the voting coming, folks. Our KGW viewer voice poll is still open right now. Are you happy with the new e-scooter rules? You can vote on KGW.com slash vote or on the KGW app by clicking the viewer voice tab. Ah, the Trailblazers are getting ready for round two. They're back home and practicing for whomever they end up going against next. Yeah, so it's either going to be the Spurs or the Nuggets. KGW's Orlando Sanchez caught up with the team today to see how they're feeling. Yeah, I mean, guys, the message at practice today was it's just one game and one series. They have bigger dreams, as you mentioned. It's time to move on. When Damian Lillard saw the reaction of fans going crazy after his big shot, he said he didn't want that to be it. He said, how are people going to react if they win the next series and go to the conference finals? That was his mentality. And when they got back to work at the practice facility, it was like they expected this to happen, and now it's the waiting game. Portland won't play until Monday against the winner of San Antonio and Denver. 
And I asked if there was a preference because if it's the Spurs, Portland gets home court advantage. I enjoy being at home. Yeah, I do. I enjoy being at home. Playing at home is cool. So uh, I'm sure guys would like to not get on a plane and have to fly to Denver. But if we have to, then so be it. That's what we look at. You know, it's, it's not about which team it is or how we feel about beating them or not. We like our chances either way. But if you can get home court, you'll take that every time. All right, this is a big deal. Center Ennis Cantor, major storyline. He's got a separated shoulder. His status day to day. No one is ruling him out of playing Monday. He told us you just got to push through it, mentioning that he basically played last game with one arm. Yusuf Nurkic gave the team a lift just by showing up to the Moda Center last game. It was the first time since breaking his leg. He was wearing a shirt underneath that jacket there that said, got bricks? Next question. Basically, it was a shot at Russell Westbrook. That's just so Nurk. Like, Nurk is a trash talker. Petty, just, <laughs> Nurk is very petty. And I grabbed his crutches and handed them to him. And I was like, man, I just don't want, I'm just making sure. And he was like, man, just cause you hit a game winner don't mean you can tell me what to do. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, my bad, bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> that shows you just That's what really that funny. dude means to the team. And his canter even mentioned that Yusuf Nurkic is their inspiration. But who, okay. are, who are these dudes? The, yeah. the, Ennis Cantor's a separated shoulder. He's right. practicing today, right. not even taking a breather or a day It's off. grit. I'm worried about him. Yeah, I, I think that there should be genuine concern about the amount of playing time that you can get out of somebody that is legitimately hurt and is working through that pain. But he is a tough dude. So Zach yeah. Collins, Myers Leonard mm. going to need to step up. You heard it right there. Yep. They're going to need they're gonna need extra help. Dame can't score 50 every night. No. So it's going to be something to keep an eye on. But all this extra rest definitely helps this team. Great. Got it. Cool. Thanks, Orlando. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. So he's living the big city life now, but comedian Ian Carmel is back home in Oregon today, and he's really fired up about the Trailblazers. I am definitely the Trailblazers, like, like chubbiest, most Jewish fan. <laughs> did, did we mention he's, he's really funny? Yeah, he sat down with our Maggie Vespa, and the two even tried to make Dame's famous shot inside the Moda Center on the court. Well, it's going to be a great weekend to be outside, as is it is right now. Look at the clear sky we have. We're in the mid-60s, too. There is a cool down on the way for tomorrow, along with a few other changes. But don't worry, the entire weekend will not be that cool.